Welcome back. I'm Mary Ann. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with me and checking out again. Um, today we'll be working on this painting here. Um, this one, this one has a, a big story to it. So I'll be um, going over the scripture that led to this one, as well as um, kind of the the nuances that happen just at random with it. So I'll be telling you all about that. Um, today is kind of one of those days where I'm dragged myself out of the fetal position to, to be here and I'm in a, a lot of pain. Um, doctors are trying new medications, so part of that journey. Um, so it might not seem like my normal cheery, happy self, but um, like I said before, I want this to be more on that raw, like truthful side. And so it's not always going to be rosy and bright and beautiful, but, but um, there's a lot of things that are swirling on with myself. And um, one of the things that has really always helped is uh, prayer. Uh, but I didn't know I was doing it wrong. So uh, that's one of those things that I've learned on my spiritual journey is that um, prayer isn't necessarily centered around yourself and your selfish needs. So uh, I've kind of learned to get out of myself a little bit and, and I pray for, for a little, literally like everything. So, um, but mostly I, I pray that God's will be done. And um, I, if I'm meant to suffer during this time, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna suffer. And um, there's a lesson to be learned. And so I just keep telling myself that at the end of all of this, something will have been learned. And uh, that's what gets me through it. Uh, there's a few books that I um, definitely have have spoken to me. Uh, there's Jesus Always. It's been really uh, a blessing. It was given to me as a gift. Um, and this one, huge story behind it. I was at Walmart. My husband and I were fighting all day, and and uh, someone had marked the page, and I was like, ah, oh, let's let's look at what this has to say. And it literally, <laughs> it turned, and I did it again because you know that just that's what really happens here when when I'm talking about God. It, things just automatically appear but it says my spouse is driving me crazy and we just kind of took a moment looked at each other and laughed and realized that you know uh god's looking out for us he's trying to lead us and he's giving us like this path and and i keep calling it an unplanned path because literally like everything that has happened to me it has been nothing that i had planned and and the more i try to plan my life and plan things that centered around my myself i i seem to just it never works out so I've just kind of let go now I've I've fully embraced the the you know God's plan path and that is it is what it is I mean if I'm meant to do something I'm gonna do it if if uh, I keep getting like the same thing said to me over and over again then maybe it's meant to happen and I need to just embrace it and not live in this this a moment or this like well of fear because I'm not meant to be there. I'm meant to be doing something better than that. And, and, um, and I, I, I must be, you know, this is part of my path. Part of my journey is to fully embrace uh, my faith and, and come into it. Um, maybe on camera, maybe this is like, you know, the way, you know, other people have, have gone back and said, you know, this is what led to me, me finding my faith. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let go and I'm gonna let God and, and we're gonna see, we're gonna see where it goes because I can't do it on my own. And right now with all this medical stuff going on, my brain is like swirling all the time. I have no idea, you know, if it's just the, the physical nature of whatever this undiagnosed problem is, I, I don't know, but time will tell. And um, hopefully with, with you guys, um, you know, being with me and, and kind of going through this journey with me, we'll, we'll learn together and, and then we'll see really what was supposed to be coming of this. And, uh, and it won't be, you know, me telling a story from hindsight and you'll be able to see it kind of unfold. And so that's really the goal. Um, this book here has a cool story. My daughter, um, <laughs> she gave it to me for Christmas and I didn't take them shopping. I, we don't do um, kids giving us presents really per se, but um, I had kind of 
I had gotten this for my birthday, which was in October. I picked this up, you know, while we're probably Christmas shopping where we're all just like out and about. And I got this. And then on Christmas Day, my daughter, my daughter gave me this one. And um, I was like, where did you get this? Like, this, this isn't. She said, well, I was cleaning my room and there was a box of books and I found it and I thought, oh, you would like that. And there's been a lot of great readings in here and really kind of bringing me um, into the fold and, and teaching me some really great things. And I, I recommend all of them. You know, the Bible is great, um, but it, it doesn't always give you like that clear message. So um, I have found that, you know, these different like inspirational type of books, these like devotionals, and not just one, it's always been like a mix of all of them. It does more than just, you know, give you like a lesson. Uh, sometimes it can be confirmational. And, and that's what I have found to be like really what's led my faith to grow is that I, I will, usually my routine is to read these towards the end of the night. And then when I uh, kind of am, journaling and like going through my day and and whatnot i i come to these passages and then i find well if i had read that in the beginning of the day i would have known this is what was gonna come of it you know like and and um it's always just confirmational it just it tells me that i'm on the right path and it tells me that you know no you did the right thing or no you could have done this better and uh it's, it's just been really it's been really illuminating and um been super helpful for for me so all right, well I'm gonna I'm gonna get the camera all set to to touch up some of this one and finish this one off and and we'll go through the story together on that. So I'll see you in a second. All right, I have reset it a little bit. You might notice a couple little chip marks in here. Um, there was some part of the using Grandma's old uh, brushes and paints, or there were some some. Uh, chip or some like um dried paint here that that was like a little too dry and bristles got got stuck in the um and the that pulled off from her old brushes and everything but that's okay i'm gonna go back and fix those little things while i'm doing this and there's only a little bit of touch up that i really need to do on this one um everyone tells me not to not to mess with this one because if this one was uh, a great story i i uh, sent a quick shot of it to um my friend marianne and and she's like, oh, I love, I love how there are people on the bridge. Oh, that was a total accident. That wasn't anything at all that I did. That's definitely uh, God working with me there. Um, I had made like little posts for the bridge and uh, I didn't like the way they looked. So I kind of just took the brush and I muddled it and I was like, I pushed it away. I said, I can't do this anymore right now tonight. Uh, I was, you know, anytime I'm painting, it's always going to come from a time when I'm, I'm hurting because I use it as kind of a distraction. Um, and so I was definitely hurting that night and, and I was just, I got to the point where I was like, I can't, um, th this isn't what I had intended by, by any means. And, um, it, I thought it just looks like some kid's crazy art or whatever, but, but, um, no, my, my friend said that it kind of gave her a little understanding and, um, and earlier in the night I was, uh, debating with my, my daughter, um, who is uh, still trying to find her footing and faith in God and all that. So um, we were talking about like the Old Testament God. And so there was a lot of confusion with um, like how God is angry and, you know, like how, how could we have like such an angry God? And, and I, I kind of was, I kind of looked at her. I, was, I didn't understand what she was talking about. I was like, my God is good. So I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, you know, because he brings like the floods and the, the storms and all that. And I, and I thought, okay, so you're talking about the Old Testament God, which I get that. Um, you know, you have, to, you have to read the Old Testament to really understand how much better things are um, in the New Testament. And, and once um, Jesus is sacrificed for our sins, um, you know, it's uh, quite a story. I, there, one show that has really kind of illuminated us a little bit is uh, The Chosen. It's uh, put out by Angel Studios, and it's it's it, regardless of of your faith or whatever. Theatrically, the movie is well done. It is, or the it's a series there rather, and it's it's really well done. And um, 
there you you pick up a lot of lessons. I mean, and that's kind of what the Bible is. It gives you parables, stories to kind of learn from. And um and just if you weren't approaching it from a belief factor, a belief standpoint, you you would just learn any learn something from it anyway. Um, and I admit getting through the Bible has never been an easy feat. I didn't understand it. This new international version, it, it gives me, um, it's an easier read. It's, um, it's easier to follow. And, um, so that's what I've kind of chosen to, to use as my, my, uh, guiding kind of, uh, studies here. And, um, that's also something that beforehand my my daughters had always been introduced to the King James version and and uh it's it's much more difficult to follow and understand a lot of you know to, to me it comes across backwards so i it's it's much more difficult so this new international version is definitely a little easier to follow um but i was trying to pick out kind of like a verse that really gave me kind of that, that understanding, um, that would help her. And, and I just, I, I kind of flipping through and like trying to find, figure it out. And I came across, um, two verses that really stood out. It was Isaiah fifty-seven twenty. Now that's from the old Testament, uh, 21. And, um, they say that one says, um, and I'll put it up on the screen too, but it says, but the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest, whose waves Cast up mire and mud. There is no place, says my God, for the wicked. Now that one, that one, for any reader would would leave you a little uneasy. It's like, well, if there's there's no peace, then then what's the point, right? And um, that's kind of what I captured on this side of the painting is is that struggle, that tossing, that violence, the the all the sin in the world that all the distractions in the world, all the craziness going on. And sometimes people are so thick in that, that, that they, there's no hope. There's no, no peace. And, and you, you get to a point sometimes in your life where you maybe can't see your own way out. And sometimes you really do need to find someone or something that will lead you out. And um, for me, for me, I can honestly say, um, you know, the day I, the day I met Marianne was uh, really amazing. And uh, she was meant to be on my path, my, my, to help me through it and out of what I was in. And uh, that day, uh, basically, the doctor confirmed what the hospital had said. I had to spend some nine days in the hospital and uh, uh, basically they told me I had uh, what was called failure to th adult failure to thrive and um, and they told me that basically come back when you're ready for palliative care and uh, <laughs> I'm 40 well at the time I was 40 and I was like I was struggling with trying to comprehend what that meant for myself for my kids for my family and I just felt like such a burden on my family. I have not contributing to the household because uh, I couldn't work physically and mentally. I was just not there anymore. Um, I couldn't cook meals for my family. It was uh, it was really, really a really hard time. And uh, for several days after, I kind of just I laid in bed and and I didn't know I didn't know what to do. And I just I curled into a ball because that was like the position that that the pain eases the best in and and I just prayed and prayed and I said you know God like what what am I gonna do you know my my what are my what's my family gonna do without me and and surely you could have you know spared me and and provided these kids for me because honestly all my kids were were met by prayer too because I was told when I was 17 I couldn't have kids and and it's like, you surely couldn't have just given me these kids just to die on them like this. And, and I, I felt like so, so lost. And, and, uh, and really like, uh, I got, I went to the doctor. I was like, you know, I, I'm going to fight this, this diagnosis because this diagnosis can't be real. It can't be right. And, uh, I went to my GI doctor and, followed up with them and 
and they, they, they said, yeah, basically, you know, we've tested you for everything. We can't figure out what's going on. And, and we can see, you know, like you're, you're fail you're starting to fail and, and we don't, we don't know what to do either. They're, they, they, uh, so there was a test for, uh, neuroendocrine tumors and, uh, I just don't know what that is. And, but it sounds like cancer to me. And they were like, yeah, it's kind of a rare cancer and, and it's, you know, we're gonna try to get imaging done for that, and there's no other real way to f to find the find those because it's uh, basically learning more about it. It's basically a, a cellular level cancer that doesn't show up on traditional imaging. It's uh, it's uh, requires special imaging. Yeah. So that's another story. That's a, a fight that I am still in today. Uh, I've been fighting with them with the with the insurance company since probably June, July, um, since the, since the, uh, the doctor said that that's what testing needed to be done and they still, and that was last year. So you know, here we are in uh, February of 2023 and I'm still fighting with the insurance company and the, they've, the doctors are still, you know, in total belief that that's what I'm dealing with, but uh, we'll just, we'll just let the cancer grow and, and, uh, and, Till the insurance company deems my life worthy to save so we'll we'll see i mean right now god's getting me through it so uh we'll see what happens with that but that day that the doctor kind of confirmed my fears i i uh, happened along my way to marianne just because uh, i had nowhere else to go and uh she she really has like helped me so much in building my faith and and putting into understanding you know like the bigger purpose like I'm, uh, my kids are gonna learn from this that that they can't take their lives for granted that they can't go down the path of you know as much sin as I did and and um you know I I used to drink a lot and um that's kind of not helped the situation for sure. And uh, my, my body is, is giving out on me because, you know, organs are failing because of my choices that I made. And um, it wasn't God, it was me. We have free will. We, we have opportunities every day to make decisions. And you can choose whatever you want, but you can't then go and blame it on God when things are, are wrong because, you know, we've taken that free will and we made our choices. Um, so now we, we can, can get back to not being mad at God for, for doing this because we now, you know, we come to an understanding that, yeah, thanks for that free will, God. I would really wish I had, you know, had a little less of that, but, but, but then there's hope because, um, Hebrews 13 20 kind of summed it up and says now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep equips you with everything God is doing or everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, that pretty much cap captures exactly what I'm saying here. It's um, You turn your life around, you get through all of this sin, all of this fight, and you realize that all that struggle has just taught you that you know, my job's not going to care if I come. I'm super replaceable. Um, they make that clear every day. Um, you know, during the COVID shutdown, that was, that was very, very clear how, how long my furlough lasted was, was crazy. And, and, um, you know, my, my job doesn't care, but, but the end, in the end, you know, the, the promise is everlasting life. Now, that doesn't mean everlasting life on this plane. Um, so you have to kind of, when you're, when you're at the point where I've been at lately, where you're, you know, you know you're, um, 
being faced with that real possibility of death and not being on this plane anymore, you kind of let all of that crap go because, because I can't, I, I can't eat food anymore. I can't, or at least not without enduring a significant amount of pain. Um, I can't drink alcohol. My body just fully rejects it. So I can't have that pleasure in my life anymore. Um, physically, like the simple pleasures of going out and just doing things that's been taken away too because, you know, like all I want to do is curl in a fetal position and, and not being in so much pain. Um, so yeah, you take away those simple things and you have to really think about, you know, getting your mind and your heart and everything right. And uh, that's where I'm living these days. And uh, so one thing that I, I wanted to do, but I had to wait for the paint to dry was add just a little bit of, of touch of red in here um, because it kind of symbolizes that that blood that Jesus spilled for us on the cross and um, exemplifies the the meaning of that. And with that, that gives me the opportunity to embrace the forgiveness of my sins, you know, that, that, that Jesus totally endured. You know, he like endured all of our sins so that I could just say, you know, the Lord's prayer and be done, you know, our, that our father prayer has been so, it's such a daily prayer for me that, and the serenity prayer has gotten me through many, many, many things. And I'll put those prayers up in the video as well, just in case you haven't found them yourself and you're curious, like, why, what does that do? Well, it takes me out of the equation. It takes, you know, my, my flaws, my imperfections, it takes those all out of the equation and it really allows me to have a sort of peace, you know, and know that I'm not in control of this narrative and and God's going to set before me whatever it is I'm intended to do. Um, so, so anyway, I hope uh, you'll continue with the video. And even if it, you're just here for the art aspect of it, I, I appreciate it. You can just you know, fast forward or through all of this and then, you know, you'll see where I pick up on the art side of it. You don't, you can mute me. You don't have to hear me, but, but I'm going to get to the art now, but that's what, uh, that's what I've come to learn these days. So, so I'm going to take some of that crimson red. And just a little bit there because I don't need a lot. And I'm just going to dab just a little bit. And then I always just kind of wet the brush just a little bit. Um, so I did that already, wet and then tap it dry. Um, and then I'm going to tap the majority of this off so that when I'm not going in with like a big glob of, of paint, and I'm just going to kind of barely touch the canvas there. And it, if you try to do this while it's wet, it's just going to, it's going to, um, muddle all the colors together so that's something I, I've uh, learned off camera so and then you'll see like I, I did like the path to the cross um, in gold so I'm going to do the path to the um, to the promised land here uh, in red so that way and you'll see the gold in the background too um, but that way you kind of find that that path along your along your journey and be it reminds me to be grateful of all of the sacrifices that that Jesus made you know uh, along the way he uh, endured um, a lot of hate and um, you know he, he wasn't well received and and uh, in his time and and uh, people took his, his uh, sacrifice for granted for a very long time. But here we are, you know, they still say we're in AD, so after the death of Christ, so that's kind of accepted now that that, that did happen. Um, we're 2,023 years later, and we are still reaping the benefit of the blood that was spilled for his sacrifice. All right. So that doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of white 
And I kind of explained on my last video to my daughter. My youngest one, Lexi, she's like amazing. So she's got such a great spirit about her. She uh, definitely keeps that innocent at heart. She's never actually been in public school. She's always been in virtual school because um, you know, everything was shut down when she started kindergarten. But part of that, I believe, kind of has kept her innocence really, really pure. And uh, she's she's not like ruined by by the world. We've kind of kept to ourselves for a while since since COVID shut everything down. Um, so I'm going to just take a little bit of white here and just kind of feather it out. I'm going to dab it on there. Um, because, you know, without uh, God's involvement, Jesus wouldn't be here. So, you know, we got to give that little bit of that symbolism to, to thank God to, so that white will kind of offer the God's, you know, involvement in this whole thing. Um, even though in, in the faith, in my faith, even, um, we, we believe that, that, uh, that Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are all one. Um, and now I'm going to just kind of go back through and do a little touch up and then I'm going to feather that out here. Let me find a, it's my feather brush. And I'll see it. Maybe will this one work? I'm just going to use this as dry and kind of feather it out. Again, I'm not an artist. I, I don't want to take credit for being an artist, but I learned a few things from my grandma who was an artist. She did some beautiful work. I'll, I'll tie in one of her, a photo of one of her works um, so you can see kind of where I learned a little bit from.